Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and today I'm going to show you how to upgrade the RAM and add or upgrade additional hard drive storage space to your ASUS Top Dash F15 gaming laptop. The model number of this ASUS Tough Dash F15 is FX516P. First, you'll want to flip the laptop over so we can remove the bottom panel of the chassis. There are 15 screws holding down the bottom cover. You'll want to unscrew the one at the front right-hand corner last, since it's the pop-up screw. Try to keep track of the order of the screws as you remove them, because they're not all the same size. But if you get them mixed up, don't worry. I'll show you which ones go where when we put it back together. I usually start by going around all the sides, then removing the ones in the middle. Alright, so now we're at the screw in the corner that we've saved for last. When you loosen this screw, you'll notice that the corner starts to lift. You might even hear it click which is normal. At this point, you should stop, because you won't be able to remove the screw all the way. Now that the panel is slightly lifted, slide a spudger or pry tool along the gap to gently unlatch the panel. In a pinch, a credit card, or even your fingernail might work. Be sure to do this along all four sides. You shouldn't have to force it as the clips are small and should release readily. Then you can lift the back cover off. As you can see here, the pop-up screw is left attached to the cover, since it has this small plastic washer that prevents you from taking it out fully, and also helps to raise the cover as you loosen it. You should have removed 7 short screws and 7 long screws, and you can see how close in size they are, so try not to get them mixed up. Ok, let's turn this around. This is the battery for the laptop, and some folks recommend disconnecting its connector to reduce the risk of electrical discharge. And while it's not entirely necessary for these upgrades, if you're careful, it's a good practice, and quick and simple to perform. So here's the battery's connector that I pointed out earlier. It's got a thin metal bar at the top, and what you want to do is slide this bar forward away from the battery. Once that's done, gently lift the white connector to disconnect it. Then press and hold the power button for 5 to 10 seconds to discharge any leftover charge in the capacitors. Alright, now that we're protected from accidental electrical discharge, let me point out the Wi-Fi card here. You've got the pre-installed M.2 SSD primary drive, and an additional M.2 SSD drive slot, here, marked SSD2 and under this black shielding is the RAM slot. When you lift that, you may find a pre-installed DDR4 SODIMM RAM stick. To remove it, unlatch the metal clip on the right and left sides, and the chip should pop up, allowing you to gently lift it out. So we can see here that this is an 8GB Samsung chip. It's single rank with 3200MHz frequency. Since there's only one RAM slot in this laptop, and I know it has 16GB of RAM, that tells me that there's 8GB of RAM soldered somewhere else to the motherboard, but that part's not upgradable. So if I want to max out this laptop with the full 32GB of RAM, I'd have to replace this stock chip with a 32GB RAM stick. And the max speed that you can use for this laptop is 3200MHz. To install a stick of RAM, lift the heat shield up, Line up the notch on the RAM with the divider in the slot, insert the chip at a slight angle, then press it down until it clicks into place. Then you can cover it with the heat shield. Now you have two choices for upgrading the storage space. You can replace the existing drive with a higher capacity one, or add a second drive to this slot here. And I'm going to do the latter. This is the Intel 660p series 1TB NVMe M.2 drive. And since the slot is marked PCIe Gen 3x4, we know that it's compatible with an NVMe interface. The mounting post here has a hold down screw that we'll need to remove first. Now orient the drive so that the keyhole notch is at the top, then insert it into the connector at a slight angle. Press down on the end and secure it with the hold down screw. 
Now ideally, we'd add a heatsink or thermal pads like the factory installed one, and I'll remove that to show you. The stock drive has thermal pads attached on both sides, and there's adhesive holding it down. This drive slot is also PCIe Gen 3x4, so NVMe compatible. I'm very gently going to remove the upper pad so we can view the sticker on the drive. And we see here that this is an SK Hynix 512GB M.2 drive. It was pretty tough to get the thermal paper off, and removing it may mess up the double-sided sticker. So if you decide to swap this drive, I wouldn't plan on reusing these thermal pads. Installing the drive here is the same as slot 2. Insert on an angle with the keyhole at the top, press down on the end, then tighten the hold down screw. Alright, don't forget to hook up the battery connector before you close this back up. Just press the white connector back into its cradle, and slide down the metal clip at the top. When putting the bottom cover on, hook in the clips on the back first, then press down on the edges and up the sides, and finally along the front. Remember, this corner will be popped up until we tighten that screw back down. Then replace the 14 other screws. The 7 short screws will go along the sides and front face of the laptop. All the long screws go into the interior holes and the two along the back. Okay, let's turn this on and see if we were successful. When you power the laptop on, to enter the BIOS, press the F2 key after the ASUS logo appears. We're interested in this section here. So this is telling us here that it sees the new Intel 660p drive we just installed with a 1TB capacity. And if we click Next, it also sees the original NVMe SSD with 512GB capacity. If you installed a brand new secondary drive, you'll have to partition and format the drive before you can see it in a file explorer, and you can check out my video on how to do that in the info bubble above. Since I pulled this drive from another laptop, it's already set up and shows up right away. You can see the one terabyte capacity here as the D drive, and my C drive is the 512 gigabyte one. You should be able to install up to two terabytes in each of the M.2 slots, giving you a total of 4 terabytes of hard drive space. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments. I'll put links for the tools and parts I recommend in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.